Good, e good evening, everyone. Thanks, Aaron. We are sticking with, obviously, with the breaking news, truly heartbreaking news for the tens of millions of people who own Apple products, but who think of themselves as fans, not just customers. Apple co-founder, chief wizard, and former CEO Steve Jobs has died at age 56. The cause of death not yet known, though, of course, he had been battling against cancer for years. Just moments ago, Apple put out a statement saying, quote, Apple lost a visionary and creative genius, and the world lost an amazing human being. They went on to say, those of us who've been fortunate enough to know and work with Steve have lost a dear friend and an inspiring mentor. Steve, the statement concludes, leaves behind a company that only he could have built, and his spirit will forever be the foundation of Apple. Go to the Apple site, and this is what you see. Steve Jobs. His death came the day after Apple unveiled a new line of products with the kind of show and tell he once was famous for. A lot of talk about that tonight. We're going to start with a look back at the life of Steve Jobs with Dan Simon. Today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. Steve Jobs was a modern-day Thomas Edison. You can do multi-finger gestures on it, and boy, have we patented it. He didn't have a patent on his own look, but he was rarely seen without tennis shoes, Levi's, and a black shirt. He was legendary for his flair and showmanship. Amazing. And the screen literally floats in midair. Stephen Paul Jobs was born in San Francisco. His mother, an unwed college student, put him up for adoption. He developed an early interest in computers, going to after-school lectures at Hewlett-Packard. After high school, he attended Reed College, but only for one semester. At just 20 years old, he started Apple Computer in his garage with friend Steve Wozniak. We worked hard, and in 10 years, Apple had grown from just the two of us in a garage into a $2 billion company with over 4,000 employees. That was Jobs in 2005, giving the commencement address at Stanford University. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever, because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path, and that will make all the difference. In 1984, Apple introduced the machine that changed our lives forever, the Macintosh. Revolutionary because it made computers easier to use. It had a funny little thing called a mouse and allowed users to change fonts. But the Mac was expensive and sales were sluggish. In 1985, Steve Jobs was forced out of Apple, but it turned out he was just warming up. I'm Buzz Lightyear, Space Ranger. In 1986, he bought Pixar Animation Studios, which later produced hits like Toy Story. He also started a computer company called Next. I hope you get a chance to look at this a little later. It's the most beautiful printed circuit board I've ever seen in my life. The technology was so innovative that in a twist of fate, Apple bought Next, and Steve Jobs went back to work for the company he started. His second act considered one of the greatest CEO tenures of all time. It's called the iPod Touch. Who knew that a computer company would change how we listen to music? Steve Jobs introduced the iconic iPod. Just slide it across, boom. The iPhone, and later what some believe would be his grandest achievement, the iPad. That's what it looks like. Very thin. Apple dropped the computer from its name to reflect the company's expansion into consumer electronics. Now, I'm going to take this morning and talk about the iPhone. In recent years, Jobs no longer appeared his usual self. He was noticeably thin and frail. And investors and Apple faithful grew alarmed because of Jobs' past struggle with pancreatic cancer. In 2009, Jobs revealed he had a liver transplant after taking a six-month leave of absence. But he returned to the stage with his usual vigor. It is our new MacBook Air, and we think it's the future of notebooks. Eventually, though, his struggle with ill health led him to step down as CEO. In a letter to the Apple Board of Directors, Jobs wrote, I have always said if there ever came a day when I could no longer meet my duties and expectations as Apple CEO, I would be the first to let you know. Unfortunately, that day has come. I have made some of the best friends of my life at Apple, he added, and I thank you for all the many years of being able to work alongside you. Steve Jobs' legacy can be found in his devices, long on aesthetics and attention to detail. He followed his heart, and with his technology... We are calling it iPhone. Changed the world. Truly one of the 
most remarkable innovators of our time. Dan Simon joins us now, along with 360MD Sanjay Gupta. Um, it, it, pancreatic cancer, that's, that's what he had, Sanjay? It was pancreatic cancer. They, they think it was a variant of pancreatic cancer. Um, it was a type of neuroendocrine tumor, but basically the pancreas makes all sorts of different hormones, including insulin. Uh, the cells that make insulin, they think it was a tumor of, of those cells. But pancreatic cancer, as you may know, Anderson, is a, is a, it's a tough, tough cancer. Just it's, uh, haven't made great progress in terms of treatments, let alone cares for this. If, um, wh why would he have had a liver transplant if he had pancreatic cancer? It, it's, it's a good question. I mean, there, 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 there's been some studies recently. It's not a commonly done thing. And you, you remember, he sort of had this done uh, literally, uh, you know, by night. I mean, he went to Memphis, Tennessee, he told no one about it, got this liver transplant. And even among the med medical community, it's a bit of a controversial thing. There's some data to suggest that doing a liver transplant Transplant can help uh, with uh, how well a, a pancreatic cancer is uh, amenable to treatment, uh, how well someone can recover overall. Uh, and in his case, it may have provided some benefit because, again, the statistics for pancreatic cancers across the board are, are terrible statistics, 20% few years survival. Uh, just a few years survival. Just a few years survival. And I think, you know, he was diagnosed, he, he talked to his company in 2004 about his diagnosis, but I think he was actually diagnosed in 2003. You may remember he spent about a year at that point not getting conventional therapy. Mm. And he was somebody who spent a lot of time traveling around the world and thought he should he could treat this uh, with with herbs and 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 not in uh, non-traditional therapies. But in 2004, he started this uh, conventional therapy in earnest. Um, we're joined on the phone by Leander uh, Connie, who's the editor and publisher uh, CultsofMac.com. He's the author of Inside Steve's Brain. Uh, Leander, thanks for being with us on, on what is obviously a, a very sad day for. Uh, for those who, who knew and loved Steve Jobs and, and also for all of us who uh, have come to rely on his products. W w what are your thoughts on hearing of his passing? Well, yeah, I was, I was really shocked, even though, um, you know, it, it, was an, it, was, it was inevitable. It was going to come sooner than later. We all knew that. Um, but I'm still shocked, yeah, and, and upset by the news. What do you think it was uh, about him that enabled him to think in the way he did. I mean, that enabled him to create things that we now just take for granted, but we couldn't have imagined before they, before he revealed them on that stage, standing in that black turtleneck. Yeah, you know, that's, uh, that's, that, that was sort of the $64 million question. It's, uh, it's a question about where does, you know, this, uh, such incredible innovation come from. But he always focused on, on the experience of using a product um, and his, you know, his, his, um, his goals are very different from the rest of the tech industry, and he wanted to make um, technology, advanced technology, which is usually complex. He wanted to make it simple and easy to use for ordinary consumers, even kids. And that was, uh, all, you know, always his goal from the very beginning of his career. And, 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 and it, you know, and because of that, it allowed, you know, it gave him a focus on things like design and ease of use. Um, and he wasn't willing. He was a, such a perfectionist that he wasn't willing to put something out half done. So he would often go down a path, you know, making lots and lots of prototypes, investing a lot of time, many years, in fact, in developing products until, you know, they were perfect. And, and this is how he was able to come up with the, you know, the, the, sort of the string of amazing inventions. His, his younger life was really extraordinary. I mean, the, n not only the uh, accomplishments at 21 with uh, Steve, Steve Wozniak, but he, even before that, he, I understand he even called up the head of Hewlett Packard when he was a teenager in order to get some spare parts and ended up getting a summer job with him. Right, yeah, he always had a lot of nerve. Um, you know, that was one of the other things, too. I mean, he, was always, he always went for the best. He was, uh, he was a bit of a snob, really, a bit of an elitist. Um, and he always wanted the best. That's why he went to, you know, right, the, the head of the biggest company in Silicon Valley at the time. But that's why he also ended up recruiting, um, you know, sort of the best architects to build the Apple stores, the best programmers to, to make the Mac OS operating system, and the best, best hardware engineers to make his computers. You know, like, uh, the best designer by Johnny Ive, um, you know, it's a, it's a shortcut to, to, to get, you know, excellence when you're, when you're working on something. When, when, when he did come out with that first computer, I mean, just explain the importance of that and just how revolutionary it was at the time. Well, yeah, the Apple II was the first uh, co uh, com computer that was designed for ordinary, um, you know, ordinary consumers. And either co computers were things that um, big companies bought and they needed an entire you know, massive room or a warehouse to put it in and they needed a team of operators to run it, or you bought a bunch of chips in a, in a, uh, in a kit and you had to solder it together yourself on your, on your, you know, your workshop table. So he was the first person to say, okay, you know, we've got to, we've got to make something that's, that someone can just pull out of a box 
and plug it in and be ready to go. And, you know, it's kind of pretty revolutionary. No one else is doing this at the time. I mean, other PCs, were, like I said, were, were built from kits. We're, we're and, get- uh, you know, this, this is a genuine, and this is where you got interested in design and, uh, and, uh, and ease of use. We're getting actually three new statements uh, about Steve's, uh, Steve Jobs' death. This is a statement by Apple's board of directors, and I'm just going to read it to you off my, uh, my computer. We're deeply saddened to announce that Steve Jobs passed away today. Steve's brilliance, passion, and energy were the source of countless innovations that enrich and improve all our lives. The world is immeasurably better because of Steve. His greatest love was for his wife, Laureen, and his family. Our hearts go out to them and to all who were touched by his extraordinary gifts. The CEO of Apple, Tim Cook, today sent the following uh, email to all his employees. Team, I have some very sad news to share with all of you. Steve passed away earlier today. Apple has lost a visionary and creative genius, and the world has lost an amazing human being. Those of us who have been fortunate enough to know and work with Steve have lost a dear friend and an inspiring mentor. Steve leaves behind a company that only he could have built, and his spirit will forever be the foundation of Apple. We are planning a celebration of Steve's extraordinary life for Apple employees that will take place soon. If you'd like to share your thoughts, memories, and condolences, and then it gives a, a, an address for Apple employees. It says, note goes on to say, no words can adequately express our sadness at Steve's death or our gratitude for the opportunity to work with him. We will honor his memory by dedicating ourselves to continuing the work he loved so much. And then Steve Jobs' family, this is the final statement we've received, um, released this statement. Steve died peacefully today, surrounded by his family. In his public life, Steve was known as a visionary. In his private life, he cherished his family. We are thankful to the many people who have shared their wishes and prayers during the last year of Steve's illness. A website will be provided for those who wish to offer tributes and memories. We are grateful for the support and kindness of those who share our feelings for Steve. We know many of you will mourn with us, and we ask that you respect our privacy during our time of grief. In terms of um, the, the, the business of Apple, I mean, what happens now? The, the company obviously has a new CEO. That does... Does the innovation continue? Does, does Steve, without Steve Jobs, can Apple continue in the same way, the same rate that it has? Um, I don't think it's going to have the same magic. It's not going to have the, you know, you, we saw that yesterday with the, with the release of the iPhone 4S. Um, you know, uh, Cook doesn't have that same charisma, the same enthusiasm, the same passion um, for the products that the Jobs did. But, you know, on the, on the one hand, it, it's got such incredible momentum that nothing is going to stop it. It's a huge runaway train. And um, they've got products in the pipeline for, you know, at least two generations, so for several years. Uh, and I don't think anything's going to stop that. But the other thing, too, is that I think in the last 10 years, I mean, Jobs, you know, no one knew that Jobs was such a great businessman. He was, he was a really great CEO. And um, he's really made, well, made that company in his image. It does things the Steve Jobs way. And um, I think, you know, that's really important. He's, he's got a great team. Um, and um, they've got great process, and I think that's the most important thing. You know, I think it, there's a really good chance, I'd say 75, 25, you know, that, that they will be able to continue his legacy just by continuing to do things the way they have been doing the last 10 years. Mm. Um, Leander, what, what um, a- after Steve Jobs uh, basically invented the, the personal computers, you said, or, or the first personal computer for, for home use, um, his foray into Next, explain what happened there, because, I mean, first he went to Next, and then he left, and then Apple bought it. What, what, was that a failure, or, or was the technology, I mean, the product itself didn't catch on, but the technology, wh- how important was that? Yeah, you're right. Um, the, the, yeah, at the time, it was considered a massive failure, and, and people were sort of surprised and, and, and a little bit amused that Apple bought it back. Uh, but it, it went on, the technology that he developed there went on to lay the foundation for Mac OS X, the operating system for the Macintosh computers, which was also, which has also been adapted for um, the, um, the, um, the iPod, the iPhone, and the iPad. So it laid the foundation for the, for the software, which is such an important part of, of what Apple does. Um, and, uh, you know, I think he recruited a lot of talent there, a lot of the, the, um, the, um, the executives that are in charge at Apple now came from Next. Um, and uh, he also learned how to be a better manager. Uh, when, he, when he quit or he got fired from Apple um, uh, before, when, when he went to set up Next, you know, he was, he was, a, he was a very irascible, um, very um, uh, unfocused, um, you know, could be all over the place. It's a terrorist. Really. They called him a terrorist inside Apple. And during the years at Next, he mellowed and learned how to work with people and delegate 
and to trust other people's instincts. So, you know, again, I think it, it set up all of the, the, um, the circumstances for his later success. It's the foundation on which he built on.